Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you as is usual. For this one we are going to return to Belgium, to the small village of Watteau which is in Flanders, the French speaking region of Belgium and we're going to revisit the St Bernardus Brewery. I've only done one review from these guys so far but that was the Trippel and it was a beautiful beer and I've heard from many people that this one is actually the best one in their range so we're going to have a taste of the St Bernardus Wit today, the Belgian Wit beer. So I'm really looking forward to reviewing this one for you but as is usual with my beer reviews, I'll take you through a short history of the brewery, tell you a little bit about where the beer comes from, all of that sort of thing. If you don't want to stick with me for that, just fast forward a few minutes into the video and you will catch that particular segment. And as always, the brewery website's in the video description for you below, along with the link to my other St. Bernard's beer reviews, which will be added to over the next little while. So as I mentioned to you, this brewery is from the little village of Watteau in Flanders, which is right next to the border with France. It's actually quite close to the city of Ypres. And it's it's, if you're looking for a sort of midpoint in terms of a uh longitude if you like it's actually right at the middle of the French cities of Dunkirk and Lille and the village actually has a population of 1900 people and it has two breweries and the other one is the brewery Van Ecke but Ypres and this sort of area of Belgium of course are very famous in the First World War the area of uh, Wata was actually the resting station for the British French and Belgian troops who manned the trenches around Ypres but the village was never the host of any fighting during the Great War so it's pretty much an original village and if you go and see Ypres I mean that place was pretty much flattened and the play it was rebuilt after the first world war which obviously was a very very kind of destructive war and quite pointless actually it was a lot of british and in british imperial greed and things like that and it was imperialism was rife throughout europe at that time a lot of young men kind of died for nothing in that sense it's a shame for these guys but the history of this brewery anyway is located is uh, associated with two trappist monasteries one of whom had a cheese factory and the other of whom had a brewery so the first of of these uh, these trappist associations if you like was was that the Trappist monks of Mondes Katz in Gurdwerswelde in France. And due to the anti-clerical policy in place at the beginning of the 20th century, the Katzbury Abbey community decided to move a few kilometres from France to the village of Watteau in Belgium. And here they transformed a farm into the Refuge Notre Dame de Saint Bernard. And they began with the production of the Abbey cheese there. And in the early 1930s, the attitude towards the monks had actually improved. And in 1934, the brewery decided to close their Belgian annex and uh, return to France. So the Monk's Cheese Factory was then taken over by Everest de Kunic who expanded it and the most important cheese that he actually made in this cheese factory was called the Saint Bernard Watteau. And the cheese factory was then sold in 1959 and is actually still in operation but it's owned by uh, Belga Milk in Moorslede. So the second uh, group of Trappist monks here were the monks of West Vletteren, obviously a very famous uh, Belgian brewery there. But following the Second World War, this monastery was looking for somebody to commercialise their beer because they didn't want to do it themselves. So they granted their licence to that cheese factory that I mentioned to you a minute ago, uh, and the, Saint Bar the brewery St Bernard was founded. Now the brewmaster from West Vletteren, Matthew Sysfranski, who was of Polish origin, he became a partner in the brewery and brought with him the knowledge, recipes and the St Sixtus yeast strain as well. So originally the brewery was selling their beers under the names Trappist West Vletteren, St Sixtus and then later as Sixtus and they brewed these beers for 46 years while the monks continued to brew for themselves and the three pubs in their neighbourhood. In 1992 though this lease if you like on the uh, on the West Vletteren Trappist name came to an end and it was the brewery was then rebranded as the St Bernardus Brewery however all the recipes did actually remain the same after this rebranding the license was then revoked and this was at the point where the Trappist monasteries had decided the only beer brewed within the monastery walls could actually be uh, branded as Trappistan beer so this brewery became a completely separate entity at this point and West Vletteren began doing what they do now and just simply brewing the small batches of beer that you can only get from the monastery so that's your sort of brief history of the uh, the St Bernardus Brewery. Just to list the other beers you can get from these guys, you get the Abbot 12, which is a quadruple, the Prior 8, which is a double, Pater, which is also a double, the Wit, which is this guy here, the Wit beer, you get the Groton beer, which is a Belgian dark ale, the Watteau triple, and also the Christmas ale, and of course you get the triple that I reviewed for you before as well. So that's your sort of kind of brief run through of the St Bernardus Brewery. We'll get on to the tasting of this guy now. Let me just bring up the camera and we'll have a little look at the bottle and cap of this guy. 
It's quite an interesting beer. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this since it's a silver one and obviously the light's going to hit off it and knacker up my camera. But you can see the typical St Bernardus monk on the front there enjoying a bit of beer as we all should do from now and now and again. I'm not sure how well you can see that. If I tip it a little bit you can just see St Bernardus wit. And each of these beers are cool because they have different bottle caps so you can collect these. And you can't really see this one very well just because it's shiny metal. But each of these different beers have their own bottle caps which you can collect. So this guy is a 5.5% Belgian wheat beer and I'll just get it open and we'll get it into the glass. So let me just check that the camera is still going because it has a habit of stopping sometimes but we'll get this open and on with the tasting. So as you can see a nice smoky opening there, quite a lot of smoke coming out of this guy actually and we'll get it into the glass. I actually can't remember the last Belgian beer that I reviewed for you. I think it might have been the West Vletteren 12 from a 250th review. So it's my first Belgian beer that I'm tasting in quite a little while and as you can see in typical Belgian fashion you're getting a massive head on this guy which of course the Belgians seem to love it and the Germans love it with their beer as well. So let's just take a little look at the colour of this beer and hopefully the head will die down a little bit. I'll just bring up the light and check that you can see the colour of this beer quite well. That's a little bit too low. There we are. So as you can see it's a very kind of nice bright kind of quite solid yellow colour actually, the light isn't doing too well, I'll just move it back there but you can see it's a really nice kind of bright solid yellow colour, if I put my fingers behind it you can't see anything through that at all, you've got a nice solid, it was probably about a three finger frothy white head there, it's gradually getting more bumpy and kind of dying down and uh, it, it's a very attractive looking beer, if I hold it up to the light again I can see just a little bit of carbonation kind of going up, it's quite big bubbles but usually the Belgian wit beers are pretty pretty well carbonated so they're usually a little bit spritzy kind of thing but it's a very attractive looking beer very very bright typical kind of colour of a Belgian style wit beer though it, it looks absolutely beautiful so let's give this guy a smell and just see how we get on so it has all the typical you can just see it you can just if you just take a smell of this it definitely has everything that you expect in the aroma from a Belgian wit beer it's got an awesome nose on it it's got the typical wit beer traits, a nice kind of sweet bready character, there's a good bit of banana in there as well. So it's slightly banana, you've got a little bit of kind of, it's got a really kind of nice white bready uh, aroma to it, some sweet yeast in there that mixes quite well with the banana, that's a very very kind of strong and it's quite a, a sharp banana flavour that comes out of this one actually. But there's a good bit of kind of orange and citrusy character in there too and a nice, you can just pick up a nice little bit of coriander and a kind of peppery spice there too so it's got all the kind of traits you would expect from these kind of Belgian wit beers very attractive, very attractive smell in beer and it, it's very very highly rated apparently this beer is supposed to be beautiful so let's give it a taste and see how we get on here yeah as I was expecting, as I said to you with the carbonation, it is quite a spritzy one. Yeah, quite highly carbonated. It's actually kind of... It's quite... On first taste, it seems quite mild. I need to kind of move it around the mouth a little bit. But it starts out with the kind of sweet yeasty bread character and you're getting the banana flavours kind of mixing in with that and some of the coriander and kind of peppery spices coming out there as well it's a very good blend of this beer, the flavours in my opinion just on a, on a first impression right enough is that the, the impression is that they blend very very well together and it blends you know it kind of it gives you the same flavours that you would ex that you can pick up in the aroma. It, it gives you pretty much everything you expect of a Belgian wit beer. So yeah, you're starting out with that kind of sweet, bready, yeasty character. You've got the sort of banana flavours mixing into it and the coriander and peppery spice as well. You get the orange and kind of citric characters coming out just a little bit too and it seems that the sort of peppery spice kind of builds into the aftertaste as well. It, it's really, it, it really is kind of quite, 
interesting how it does that. That peppery spice character kind of builds up a little bit into the aftertaste, and you just get this little spicy bit going down the middle of your tongue. It's really, really nice. So yeah, you start to get the kind of sweet banana -y character out of this one and it just sort of lingers there up to, on, towards the front of the tongue and a little bit into towards the back of the mouth as well. The wheaty character that is, is sit, kind of sitting more towards the back and that's where you're getting a little bit of the spice. The spice is coming, kind of coming out a little bit just around the edges and then you've got the kind of fresh orangey citrus just right on the edge of the tongue there. It's, it's, re it's a really really nice kind of blended flavour on this beer. It's actually quite a sharp fruity flavour that comes out of this one. It is, in my experience, I do think this is a little less sweety and a little bit more fruity than some of them, but it's quite an, a sort of acidic fruit that's coming out of it as well. It's, it's quite interesting. It reminds me a little bit, it, obviously it doesn't have the caramel element there, but it reminds me a little bit of some of the, the acidity that you get in some of the Dunkelweizens in Germany, which is quite interesting. But overall, I mean, it's quite an interesting beer. In terms of the mouth, it's very light bodied actually, but it's got a very rich mouth feel all the same. It's it's slightly creamy, but at the same time, it does have a really kind of spritzy and kind of well carbonated feel to it as well. But the creaminess actually stops the beer from being too dry. I can see without this little kind of creamy aspect to the mouth feel, the beer would be really, really dry and not so drinkable. But it's slightly bitter in the finish as well, and it has just a little bit of a kind of sweet dryness to it. It's the sort of sweet kind of winey dry, dry, dryness you would associate with white wine a little bit. It has the same kind of feel to it because of the citrus element in the beer I think. But it's overall, I mean it's a very very well blended uh, Belgian wit beer and of course it was, it is brewed essentially in the same kind of fashion as you, as you, if you would describe it that way with, uh, with West Vletrin. I mean it's like, this is a great brewery, I know anything you're going to try from these guys, you really won't be disappointed with. It's a very interesting whip beer, this one, that I would highly recommend trying, and I can see why people have said that it's probably the best beer in the range. The Belgian style whip beer, perhaps, I would say isn't quite, isn't my personal favourite style. If I was going to Belgium, I'd probably always drink a triple beer, or a um, quadruple or double. I'm not so, I wouldn't kind of go out of my way too much to drink a, a Belgian whip beer, but this is a very, very good one. And, uh, and you know, I highly recommend that you try it if you get the chance. It's the difference I find between the German Weizens and the Belgian Whit beers is that the, the Belgian ones tend to be very, very light and quite sort of fairly highly carbonated in that uh, in, the, in that sense. So they're a little bit more sessionable in that way. I find Hefeweizen's very, they're, to me they're always sipping beers, whereas this one is a little bit more sessionable. So if you're into that and you like Belgian wit beers, this is probably a kind of world class one that you really that you really sort of need to try at some point during your beer drinking career. So um, anyway, I hope you found it informative. As, as I say, this is a very nice blend, uh, a nice blended flavour in this one that has all of the elements you would expect of a Belgian wit beer and of course it is quite a prestigious Belgian brewery so definitely worth a try if you do get the chance but as always I hope you've enjoyed this beer review please let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it but please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff and I will catch you soon with another beer review cheers